in breaking news. Out of control. I'm frustrated and I'm angry and I'm and I feel powerless. The violence that is high. Record number of cases in the last 24 hours, more than 9 million cases worldwide now. News can now project former Vice President Joe Biden will win the state of Michigan. This, of course, was a crucial part of Biden's strategy. Nothing is impossible with God. Around my joy. How, when I was out there and did not know him, my sins could have. To be able to put our arms around you, to be able to fellowship, to be able to. Good morning, everyone. We want to welcome you to our third Sunday service, and we're so happy to have everyone joining with us near and far, and that we are still spiritually connected in a physically disconnected somewhat world. We're going to go ahead and get started with service with a prayer by Maggie Chapman, followed by scripture by Maggie Chapman, followed by a welcome by Jordan Ficklin. Good afternoon, everyone, and happy Father's Day to all the fathers on the line, and happy Father to the mothers who stood in the place of a dad. Now, let us go to the throne of grace. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you, dear Lord, for this day. Thank you for a day that we've never seen before, God, and a day that we'll never see again. Heavenly Father, I just want to lift up all sick and shut into you right now, Heavenly Father. Bless all the fathers, dear God, all over the land and country right now, Heavenly Father. Dear Lord, I just want to thank you for being the God that you are. You is the best thing that ever happened to me, dear God. You is the greatest. There is no other like you, dear Lord. Heavenly Father, I lift up all sickness and disease to you right now. I lift up cancer, high blood pressure. I want to bless uh, our pastor this, this afternoon, dear Lord, and let her go and do the word that you have gave her to do, Heavenly Father. Bless everybody that is on this line right now. Bless all family members that is connected to them, dear God. Heavenly Father, I know there's somebody might be going through right now, dear Lord, but let them know, don't give up. Let them keep the faith, keep the eyes on you, dear God. Never take your eyes off of the Lord because he's always there for you, Heavenly Father. Dear Lord, just thank you for being the God above all other. There is none like you, dear Lord. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, dear Lord. Thank you for waking all of the of us up this morning and we were close in our right mind. You didn't let that old devil t let us sleep too late and let us rose right on time. <laughs> Just continue to put your loving arm around each one of us and carry us through day by day. Heavenly Father, the old saying say, Yesterday is gone and tomorrow might never be mine. So just let me take one day at a time, Lord. Dear Lord, I just want to thank you again. And this is my prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And now I'm going to be scripture. And now I'll be coming out of Proverbs chapter 20, verses 1 through 7. And it reads as follows. Wine is a marker and beer a brawler. Whosoever is led astray by them is not wise. A king's wrath strikes terror like the roaring of a lion. Those who anger him forfeit their lives. It is to one's honor to avoid thrice, but every fool is quick to curl. Gluggers do not plow in season, so at harvest time they look but find nothing. The purpose of a person's heart are deep water, but one who has insight draws them out. Many claim to have unfailing love, but a faithful person who can find. The righteous mm -hmm. lead blameless lives, blessed by their children after them. I have read Proverbs chapter 20, verses one through seven, that God add a blessing to his word, amen. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to St. Paul Seeing Church's Sunday service. I would like to start off by wishing every father a happy Father's Day. 
You can find us here every first and third Sunday at one o'clock for Sunday service. And you can find us here every Monday at six o'clock for a uh, prayer call and every Wednesday at seven o'clock for Sunday school. On behalf of Reverend Ziglin and the church family, we would like to welcome you to St. Paul CME Church and hope to see you again. We want to thank all our program participants so far. We'll now have the announcements by Sister Stacy Pinkston, followed by a special presentation from Father's Day. Good afternoon, everyone. Birthday for the month of June. Ashley, this is Pastor Flickman, the seventh. George Gwen Ash Watkins, the twentieth. Jamisia Warren, the twentieth. I want to say happy anniversary to James and Fanny Clayton and George and Gwen Ashley. Announcement: Reopening meeting on Tuesday, June 29th at five thirty at the church. Try three sixteen will practice July first at six p.m. at the church. We will also have a fun day at the church on July 10th. That's it for announcement.
Good afternoon. I will be reading a poem titled, He is a Father, a Black Father. He is a Black Father, the shine in a little girl's eyes, the icon of a son in the mirror, a husband to his woman, a provider and a leader, the endearing traits of a real man, personified in how he lives. He is a Black father, the strength of the family unit, the shelter in a raging storm, a patriot to the ancestral tree. His seeds produces legacies to carry on his dynasty. He is a Black father, stability in the midst of adversity. He rules with a gentle hand, teaches his daughter how to be loved, to accept nothing less than a true man. He is steals pride in his son to be the best man that he can be once a year is not enough to give credit where it is due he is a black father a mental influence to the innocence of youth without a heavy hand as proof if you had to measure a man in all he say or do it is in the path he chooses to follow it is the fruits of his wealthy spirit that makes him so unique it is he a black father a father that God took the strength of a mountain, the majesty of a tree, the warmth of a summer sun, the calm of a quiet sea, the generous soul of nature, the comforting arm of night, the wisdom of the ages, the power of the eagle's flight, the joy of a morning in spring, the faith of a mustard seed, the patience of eternity, the depths of a family need. Then God combined these qualities when there was nothing more to add. He knew his masterpiece was complete. And so he called it on this special day, Dad. To our fathers, our black fathers, our kings, our protectors, and our heroes, happy Father's Day. We love you. You know what it means, right? The video's getting recorded, right? You know, you know what it means, right? On Facebook. And on this. So I can play it later? Yeah. Yeah. I to be.
Thank y'all. This has been a beautiful Father's Day service. We will now have a message from our pastor. We will welcome Reverend Carlotta Ficklin to bring us the word. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all our fathers who are out there. I just want to celebrate you this, today and let you know that we are thinking about you and praying for you at the Paul. I tell you, we couldn't definitely couldn't do it without the faithful men in our community, in our ministry want to just first salute you and celebrate you and hope that we are honoring you on this day. Um, there's some things that I wanna share with you. Uh, we are re going back into the building. The church left the building, but St. Paul is returning to the building. Returning to the building uh, the first Sunday in July. Want you to know that we will still maintain our presence here. We will be live Facebook and uh, uh, and through the platform Zoom, uh, but our time will change from one o'clock to 11 o'clock uh, live. We will now be at 11 o'clock live, not one o'clock. So those of you who've been faithful in joining us via Zoom, please continue to join with us for our 11 o'clock worship. Uh, so we're excited about that, that we will always be a uh, virtual church and that we will always be uh, on the social media platform. And we're excited about that. We understand that uh, there are people who have enjoyed our ministry and enjoyed worshiping with us. And Lord knows we've enjoyed having you. And uh, you have really been a blessing to this to this ministry, to this community. Um, and so we want you to we want to continue to embrace you and we definitely want you to continue to feel a part of this family. So continue to worship with us. We are having reopening the church meetings because we will do this safely. I hope that I have presented to you over the years that I have a shepherd's heart. And uh, I don't want anyone to get to get uh, this virus. There is a Delta variant that is out there now. Um, uh, every time the virus mutates, it gets a little bit stronger. And um, we, I want to encourage you, if you have not gotten vaccinated, please get vaccinated. Please get vaccinated. I've been vaccinated since February, y'all, and I'm doing fine. Everyone in my house is vaccinated. I, I, I um, just encourage everyone to get vaccinated. We we, uh, there is a Delta variant out and we have to be concerned about our youth uh, that are under the age of 16, as well as those who have chosen not to get vaccinated. So we will continue to maintain COVID-19 protocol during worship. And we will do this until this pandemic is over. So if you come to St. Paul, please be patient with us. Please uh, 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 don't charge things to our heart, but charge it to our head. We, we're just trying to do the best thing we can that everybody will feel welcome, everybody will feel safe, and everybody will want to uh, come in, that want to come in and worship will. And we understand that some of you will continue to remain virtual, but uh, please continue to um, do that if, you, if you're doing that. We also uh, want to let you know that we, if you want to participate and give us some input, um, some feedback on the decisions that we've made about reopening with this COVID-19 protocol and what we're doing in the church to be safe, uh, we are having another um, meeting. Our last meeting will be actually at the church on Tuesday the 28th at 5.30. Tuesday to 28th at 5.30. Uh, we did, we, we would have had a meeting normally this Tuesday, but some of us met at the church to see, uh, um, to see, uh, which to discuss the reopening on last week. We, we went there for one reason, turned to be a whole reopening meeting. So we've got quite a bit accomplished. But if you want to continue, um, if you want to be a part of it, join us on, on, on the 28th. Uh, for that meeting. 
Reverend Dean's 90th birthday celebration was on yesterday. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, 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 I believe uh, the Claytons, uh, Charles and Johnny Clayton, um, Sister Teresa, Sister Stacy, Sister Maggie. Don't want to, I don't think I'm leaving anybody out, but if I'm, if I do, y'all jump in. They uh, got on the church van and went to the drive through celebration. Uh, went through the drive through celebration and had a, and, and let me tell you, uh, uh, the, the, the Dean family, the Dean family, I was on a Zoom party at uh, three o'clock. The Dean family talked about that. They said that that was one of the highlights of the day, the, the St. Paul Church family coming through. And um, I believe on the, I believe on the, uh, Zoom party was myself and Brother Harold Lawson and Brother Brian Clayton and uh, some other members joined on there. And I also sent a letter to him and to the family that they said that they were going to read over lunch, uh, letting saluting him and celebrating them on this 90th birthday. To be 90 years old and to be have the functions of his limbs, to be in good health and to be in the right state of mind, very vibrant, very vibrant. 90 and still yet youthful. We just celebrate him. We just celebrate him on this uh, 90th birthday weekend and Father's Day. I uh, want to um, highlight to uh, our, our, our ministry that has kept us doing this season. Um, it, it, I, I'm excited. I, I'm super excited to get back and us to assemble together. Want us to be saved, but I'm super excited about that. But I'm also sad that we are uh, are leaving this forum because I can't say it enough. St. Paul has done a phenomenal job. The whole Augusta Far District ought to look at us. We have done this phenomenally. And we should be a uh, benchmark for the for the whole district, the way that we have handled this pandemic and this virtual worship. We have not missed anything. We have continued to maintain all of our ministries in a pandemic, y'all, in a pandemic. And I just got to thank you all. I got to thank you all. Um, you know what? One thing about it is the church may have left the building, but the St. Paul is still thriving. We're still very... Uh, we're still rock, rock thriving. We're still very resourceful. We're still doing the will of God. We're still about kingdom business, even in the midst of the pandemic. Didn't nobody do it like us. And I just want to celebrate that. You know, we may have had some of the uh, mega churches across the country that were able to maneuver and, and navigate this. But I'm talking about having to do it with a small congregation on small scale. We did it magnificently. Let me salute our young adults who have sacrificed their time and their efforts in this pandemic to make sure that this goes off every every week without a hitch. You all, you you, you know, they got to be in place wherever they are, um, wherever they are. They got to be. I, I hate to start calling names because don't want any feelings hurt, but uh, they got to be in place wherever they are. Whenever we're having a meeting, to 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 admit us in because they're hosting the meeting to middle sin, to make sure that we get in. You don't just get in because you log on to Zoom. They admit us. And so if they're at work, they're trying to do it. They're all working behind the scenes. You don't know the conversations and the phone calls that go on behind the scenes to make sure that we pull off all of these meetings that we have. And um, their pastor and St. Paul are going to take a special time to salute all our young adults and, and your efforts. You all have been you all have been a blessing to God's kingdom. Don't y'all stop it. When we go back in, uh, when we go back in, I was just telling someone that uh, they were like, who gonna lead the younger dust? Your pastor gonna lead the younger dust. I'm gonna lead y'all because you all are so special to me. I am, I have taken y'all under my wing. You all are so special to me and we're going to greater new heights. God's gonna take us higher and higher and higher. And higher, and we're going to go out and tell other churches where well, you all have already started doing it in the district how we did it, y'all. We're leaving. Uh, we're li with the church is going back into the building, but we're not leaving virtual worship. We're going to do it better, greater than we've ever done before. 
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now rejoicing, Lord God, rejoicing in the mighty name of Jesus because you have kept your word, Lord. You have been faithful even in the midst of a storm, Lord. You have been our provision. It is through your will, Lord God. It is through your direction, your guidance that we were able to maneuver this virtual service that we were able to make it, Lord God. I don't take this for granted, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, that the church had to sometimes just be in my in, in my office, in my home, Lord. That was my church. And, and, and I couldn't see the people. I couldn't get the response to the people always, but God, you've been so good. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord God, that you've been so good. You've been so good. And Lord, I don't take this opportunity for granted. I don't take this, Lord, opportunity that you have allowed us to stay connected, to stay connected, even in the midst of a pandemic, Lord. When there have been churches, Lord, that were not able to communicate with us, but you have always given us insight and wisdom how to maneuver this thing in the midst of this storm. You navigated the ship, Lord. You, you woke you when we thought you were sleeping, Lord. You were never sleeping. You woke up and you guided us in the in, in the way that you would have us to go. And that way, our church was able to thrive. Lord, our church was able to persevere. Our church was able to be resilient, Lord. When, it, when the enemy thought he was going to take us out, you kept us, Lord. He, you kept us. You kept us, Lord. When the enemy thought it was going to destroy us, Lord, you kept us. And today we extend to you our gratitude. Today we extend to you our thanks. Now, Lord, as I prepare to bring this message, I ask that, Lord, that you would guide the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. Allow it to be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord. Speak, Holy Spirit, speak. Your Holy Spirit, come now, Holy Spirit. Have thine own way, Holy Spirit. Use me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Scripture lesson before the morning was read in its entirety by Sister Chapman. Thank you, Sister Chapman, uh, for your faithfulness as our exhorter. But it was read in its entirety by Sister Chapman, Proverbs chapter 20, verses one through six. But this morning, I want to just focus on two verses, verses six and seven. So if you have your Bibles, please turn to Proverbs chapter 20. Proverbs chapter 20. And we're gonna focus just on the verses six and seven, verses six and seven. If you would now turn with me, Proverbs, chapter 20. And it reads, most men will proclaim each his own goodness, but who can find a faithful man? The righteous man walks in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. I want to preach this morning a sermon entitled, Who Can Find? a faithful man. Who can find a faithful man? The, the problem in our society is that too many times in our culture, we place a great deal of emphasis on men, and I'm talking about young men and old men who are not responsible fathers. Too many times the community has to rise up and and deal with the fallout from these absentee fathers. Amen. And the failure of these men often overshadow the accomplishments of good, faithful fathers. Recently, I was intrigued, y'all. This thing, this, 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 this program really, really blessed me. I was, I was intrigued by a program on OWN where they honored Black fathers. It was hosted, of course, by Oprah Renfrey, and, and, and a co-host was actor Sterling Brown. And y'all, I really enjoyed the show. I think it's going to come back on it this weekend sometime. If you get an opportunity, check your listing and, and see if you can capture this show or, or, or go and, 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 and see if you can find this particular show. But it honored Black Fathers. 
And they highlighted men that were extraordinary fathers. I mean, they, they, they had some celebrities on there, but they had you all ordinary black men. And, but all of the fathers that they recognized were amazing. And there was a few of y'all that really stuck out to me. There was one that he fought for the custody of his child and won after the mother chose to give the child up for adoption. The mother was giving up the child for adoption because the grandmother despised that the father was black. Another father on there, he, he lost his wife almost immediately uh, after she gave birth to their second child and he was devastated. It, 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 it could have destroyed the family, but this, this young black man hurriedly became mother and father and he was just very committed to raising successful black men. And, 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 and not only was that great, that he almost instantly became both parents, but due to the circumstances surrounding his wife's death, he also became an advocate to eliminate the disparity between black women and white women when it comes to getting good medical care. Y'all, that's a conversation for another day. That's a conversation for another day because there, there, there is a difference sometimes. I'm not saying in every situation, in the care that, that Black women get and, and women of other persuasions receive. And so he's an advocate for that. But this TV show, y'all, especially was special to me. It, it was special to me because it encouraged me that we should stop, y'all, not just on Father's Day, not just on Father's Day, but continuously and celebrate good fathers. We gotta take more time to celebrate good fathers. We invest so much of our time, so much of our resources into to fathers who are not meeting the mark and we forget that there's still some good men, good fathers out there. So uh, uh, if you look at Proverbs 20, Solomon starts with words of wisdom, words of wisdom about alcohol abuse. He talks about, he, he talks about the consequences of, of alcohol abuse. He talks about upsetting people in authority. He talks about avoiding conflict and, and being lazy. And he gives you words of wisdom on how to do that. I, I love it. I love the proverb because in the proverb, Solomon basically says that that uh, that if you're lazy, <laughs> he said, a slugger do not plow in season. But at Elvis' time, look, but can't find nothing. <laughs> that, that, that's real sad. He said, if you're lazy, if you're lazy, in, in, in the time when it's time to plant, when it's time to sow, he said, when the harvest comes, you're going to have to beg for your food because that's what happens to, that's what happens to lazy men. So Solomon says, Solomon gives wisdom about these things, but in the sixth verse, in the sixth verse, in the sixth verse, he says, most men will proclaim each his own goodness. Now, what he's really saying is that most men will say that they're good people. Most men will say that they're loving people. And, and, and that's what most men will say, y'all. I, I got to agree with Solomon. Most men going to say, I don't care if he's a good man, bad man, horrible man. If you ask him if he's a good man, most men going to say yes. But then Solomon asked the question, who? He said, you can say yes, you can say yes, you can say yes to I'm a good man, but a good man and a, and a faithful man is two different things. He said, when we look at the world through our own eyes, it's easy to say that I'm a good man. It's easy to say that you're a faithful man. It's easy to say that you're a loving man. But then Solomon asked the question, who can find a faithful man? 
Oh, I came by here today to answer that question. <laughs> I came to answer that question today because y'all, we have good fathers. We have good fathers in our homes. I got one right here. We have good fathers on the job. We got good fathers in the church. We got good fathers in our neighborhood. We got good fathers in the community. But a lot of times, they don't get any recognition because too much of our time, too much of our energy, too much of our resources are, 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 are exhausted on men who are not missed who are missing the mark. But in order to know what a faithful man is, in order to know what it means when a man is showing up, what it means when a man is present, what it means when a man is faithful, I, I, I want to explain that to you today. I, I want to spell it out using the word father. Can I do that for you today? Can I spell out what a faithful man looks like using the word father and break it down into, into the letters oh, yeah. of that word? F-A-T-H-E-R, F-A-T-H-E-R. Let's look at the F first. What does the F mean? A faithful father. A faithful father focuses on his faith. A faithful father focuses on his faith. His faith. Some of you might not like this today, but I'm going to keep it real with you. I'm going to keep it 100 with you. His faith comes before his family. He understands, as Luke 1 and 37, one of my favorite Bible verses says, for nothing will be impossible with God. Amen. A faithful man understands that you can do nothing Without God, anything that you do without God is going to destined to fail. You got to have God first place in your life. If you're going to lead a family, if you're going to guide a family, you got to put God first. He understands that the enemy is real. And he understands that the enemy comes to kill, to steal, and destroy. He understands that the enemy comes to kill his joy. That the enemy comes to steal his family. And he understands that the enemy comes to destroy his life. Steal his soul. Keep him from the promise of heaven. So he understands a good father focuses on his faith. Nothing is important, more important than his faith. And too many times, too many times we, 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 we don't train our young fathers to know that. We, we train our young fathers to grow up, uh, to be respectful, to, uh, to do well in school, to get a degree so they can get a good job and so they can provide for their family. But we got to teach these young men that I don't care how many degrees you get. I don't care what type of woman you meet. I don't care how good and kind you are if you don't have God first place in your life. Mothers, you got to tell them that. Fathers, you got to tell them that. If God ain't first place in your life, all the stuff that you store up, all the stuff that you store up, all the stuff that will become important to you in your life, your finances, your family, your, your stuff, your things, the enemy will come along and devour it because the Lord has to be the center of your joy. And when he's first place, when he's first place, then you don't have to worry about anything because you know that God got you. God got you. A lot of the burdens, a lot of burdens fall on the Father, but, but when God is center of his life, when God is center of his, and how many fathers, how many good faithful fathers now know that for sure? They know, they say, hey, you know what? When, when, when I met Jesus, when I really met Jesus for myself, then everything began to fall in place in my life. But before then, I, I could do well, and then something would come along and consume and eat up everything. But that's because their life was not, 
their life was not right. So how do, a, how do a good father, how do a faithful man, a man desiring to be faithful, know how to line his life up? That's where the A comes in. The A in the word father says align himself with the word of God. A faithful man aligns himself with the word of God. He gets in the word of God. He shows up, y'all. He shows up. He shows up. He don't just show up at work every day. He don't just show up. He don't just show up at work every day. Every day. He don't just show up at the little league games and the, and the sporting events and and, and, and the uh, activities for the kids and the celebrations with family. He shows up in the church, y'all. He shows up in the church and he don't just do a drive by on the church cuz we got we got a lot of we got a lot of men doing drive bys on the church. He don't just do a drive by on the church, but he shows up in the church at Bible study. He shows up at the church in Sunday school. He shows up at the church in worship. He shows up so that he can align himself with the word of God. And we understand that as fathers, sometimes you have to work two and three jobs to support the family. But take your Bible to work and read it on your break. <laughs> read your Bible in the morning when your feet hit the floor. Get you a devotion. Show up when you're able to be off. Don't use that as the day that you sleep in. The day that you sleep in is the day that you're off. If we have a service and you're sleeping in, come on to church and sit up under that word. Come to Bible study when you are able and sit up under that word. And then you can align yourself. <laughs> then you can align your life with the word of God. See, everybody puts everything on the farm. I, I, <laughs> I got to tell you that I know a little something about that. Everybody puts everything on the father. You know, when things go wrong in the house, I, I'm the first one to say, baby, the, uh, baby, uh, the thing that that's not working right. The garage door not opening up right. The, the, the light in there uh, messed up. I, you know, everybody puts everything on the father. Uh, you, you know, a lot of times uh, when financial issues come up, when, when you know, when, when tuition is due around here, we have to pay tuition around here. With tuition, we've been paying tuition look like forever. Look like we can have kids in school continuously. And I and the tuition get bill, the tuition, uh, the children come in and tell their daddy what they what we gotta pay out of pocket for tuition. And, and that's usually the time when I say, whoop, it's convenient time for me to leave the room, you know. <laughs> but but everything goes on the father. And, it, and the father, if he aligns himself up with the word of God, if he aligns himself up with the word of God, then he can leave everything that's going on at the house at the master's feet. If you can do that, if you are faithful man, you don't have to stay up all night and worry about how you're going to pay tuition. You don't have to stay up all night and worry about Can y'all hear me? We can. Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. If you are, if you are a faithful father, then you align yourself up with the word of God. You don't have to worry about how you gonna pay the bills. You don't have to worry about how you gonna take care of the family. You can leave all of that at the master's feet. You can leave all of those cares at the master's feet. When your world seems like it's going to fall apart, you'll be able to say, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. When you don't know how you're going to be able to pay the light bill, the water bill, if you don't know how you're going to be able to pay the mortgage, you'll be able to say, God will supply all of my needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. When the children are sick, 
When your, when your wife is, is frustrated, you can get on your knees at night and say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If you withdraw yourself to me, then where shall I go? A oh, real man aligns himself up with the word of God so that he'll be able to make it through every situation. We got too many men out there. We got too many men out there, sisters, that, sisters that we're losing because they're not lining themselves up the word of God. And, and we're training them. We're training them when they're young how to be a lot of good men. But you better tell your, you better tell your son, you better tell your daughter that if Christ ain't in it, it's going to fail. I don't care how hard you study. I don't care how hard you work. I don't care how many promotions you get. I don't care how sharp you are. If Christ is not in it, you going to fail. So line yourself up with the word of God. The T. The T in Father means that he teaches and he trains. He teaches and he trains. A lot of times, the problem is that a lot of fathers, a lot of fathers, good men, work a lot, work a lot, and, 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 and they don't get an opportunity to really teach and train. They don't get an opportunity to, to, to show the young, the, the young boys how to throw a ball or, 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 or have conversations with their young ladies to see where their heads are. You understand what I'm saying? If you're not having good conversations with your daughters, don't you know that some of these side jokers can come in and tell them anything? But if daddy oh, is talking to them, if daddy is mm -hmm. talking to them, and if daddy is telling them this is how a man should treat you, this is how a man is supposed to respect you, this is the way that you should carry yourself in front of a man, and, and, and this is what a man is supposed to be able to do for you if he cares about you, you will increase <laughs> Why? you increase because of the man comes in your life. Your life will get better if a good man, a, a father, a real father teaches and he trains. He teaches and he trains. He don't just leave that to the mother. He don't just become the breadwinner and say, I'll let mama handle that. I'll let mama teach him. She here, I'll let her teach the kids. I let her no. I let her go to the practices. I let her do all of this because I gotta work. A real father makes sacrifice to sit down some nights when you when you're tired and and talk to your kids and teach your kids and train your kids. Don't just walk around talking about you the disciplinarian. Talk to the kids. Teach the kids. Train the kids. I remember that my grandfather, who was y'all know y'all know, I told you so many times that my father was an absentee father. He, he was not there for me and my sister. And so uh, we, we, we had a mother who, who after they divorced, she became both mother and father. But thank God for the village. Thank God for the village. That's why I love a village. I love a village. And I love being a part of the village. Folks ask me, my kids ask me, my mama, why are you always fooling with other folk children? Because I'm in the village. I'm in the community. I'm in a village. I'm a part of a village. But but I want you to understand that my grandfather didn't. He worked all the time, and he owned. Uh, he always owned some kind of business. So when we were little, we only saw him as the disciplinarian, uh, and, and and then he didn't even whoop us then. We were just scared of him because he was daddy, and everybody say we are gonna tell daddy now if you don't do right. But he was such a wonderful man, a sweet man. But he was robbed of time with us because he was always trying to make sure that we had a good life, that we had we had everything that we needed and most of the things that we wanted. And so he worked really hard doing that. He was always working. Uh, and he, you know, we went on wonderful vacations together, but uh, he took us to wonderful vacations and exposed us to a lot of different things. But that was one week out of the year we were gone. And so it wasn't until I was an adult, a young adult, that he had retired and he had more time. But what was most valuable to me, most valuable to me, is that he spent time in that season teaching and training, teaching and training. And, and, and I, when I think about it, if I had had that opportunity to be taught by him as a child, 
but, but but to be taught by him as a child, young men out there raising real, real men, real men, real fathers today, make room for your children. Make room to teach them and train them while they're young. I've learned some valuable lessons with him from him as a young adult. He taught me so much. We had so many wonderful conversations and, and we came really close. He was my buddy. Uh, he was my buddy. I loved him to death. And anytime I had a problem, I would call him. But I really wish I had a head that as a child with a man in my life. One who was there to teach me, one who was there to train me, to show me different things, to teach me how a man was supposed to treat me, to teach me what the expectation. My granddaddy showed me, but he wasn't there to have the conversation with me. So what happened when the first man come along to say, I love you, what you do? I compromise myself. I compromise myself and said, OK, I can deal with that. I can deal with that. I can deal with him being that way. I can deal with him doing that. I can deal with that because I needed to have the training, spend time teaching and training. That's what a faithful man does. Then the H comes, then the H comes, F-A-T-H. Honest, a real father is honest. He's a man of integrity, a faithful man. He's the man of integrity, this man is trustworthy and he has morals and he has values and his word is bond. His word is bond. He's not going to lie to you. He's not going to deceive you. A real man is a man of integrity. I don't know how many times I've talked to my father over the, over the years when he was living and if he told you something, you best not put your faith in it. And I tell you, he wouldn't tell you the truth for nothing. And in a word, if he told you something, you could not count on it. That was sad, y'all. That was that was painstaking for a child. That was disappointing because my father would make promises and not keep them. My father wouldn't even call on a regular basis. He 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 was not a man of integrity. He, 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 he just didn't, he, all he was, he was self-consumed and only concerned about himself. And, and, but a real man is a man that, who gives you his word and his word is bond. If you look at Proverbs, the 20th chapter in verse seven, it says that the righteous lead blameless lives. It, uh, it says a righteous lead brings life. I got another translation that says that the righteous man walks in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. If you are a faithful man, there, there are certain things that you're just not going to do. You're not going to lie. You're not going to cheat nobody. If you say you're going to do something, you're going to do it. You're going to be trust married. You're going to be a man that you're going to be a man that shows up, that's present, that gives his word, and his word is bond. But I want you to know that uh, Solomon says the righteous man walks in his inte integrity, but he also says that there's a promise that comes with that. The, the, the second phase of that says that he walks in his integrity and his children are blessed after him. So it says that if you are a trustworthy man, if you're an honest man, you don't have to worry about your children. You don't have to worry about your children. That's a promise, Solomon says. Solomon says that comes with that. That's a promise. If you honest, if you a man of integrity, guess what's going to happen? Your children going to be blessed. You're a generation changer. <laughs> because that means that then, guess what? That's your children are going to be that way. Your children are going to be that way. Your children are going to be people of good moral ethics. They're going to be honest people. They're going to be trustworthy people. And it's important. We got too many folks who will tell you one thing and do another. We got too many mm -hmm. folks that look in your face and lie to you. Too many men. When, that, that, there are so many young women out here without men because the men don't have no integrity. 
They doing all other things. They running one and more women. They they lie to you. You do you talking to them? You, 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 they tell you they one place, they 20 other places, they got this woman, that woman. A real man, though, has morals and values. And he's an honest man, he's a man of integrity. And, and, and let me tell you something you want that kind of man, you want a faithful man because once he's faithful, once he's faithful, then it says that that's how his children go. See, we, we got to be careful about, we, we got to be careful, young ladies, about who we yoke our life with. Because not only are we messing up our lives, we messing up our children's lives. My father couldn't destroy me because my mother had me covered in the blood. My father couldn't destroy me because my surrogate father, my grandfather, was an honest man. He was a man of integrity. He was a trust-bearing worthy man. He was a man who gave you his word and he kept his word. And so that's why, that's why, and that's why God has raised me to be that way because he blessed me as a result of the way that my grandfather who raised me carried himself. And then the E. The E says he embraces the love of his family. A faithful man embraces the love of his family. He loves his family and, and he shows them that he loves them. He loves his family and everybody knows he loves his family. Too many times people, he, he, people tell you one thing, but the, his, his life, shows the love for his family, a faithful man. Who can find a faithful man? You can find a faithful man because you know that he loves his family. You know that he loves his children. You know that he loves his church. You know that he loves his mother. You know it. That's how you can find a faithful man because a faithful man embraces the love of his family. Embraces the love of his family. He doesn't take it for granted. He doesn't, he doesn't disrespect his family because he understands that, that the family loves him and the family is willing to follow him and follow his lead. So he does everything every day to honor, to honor his family. A real father thinks about his children before he makes decisions. He thinks about his children before he he, before he says things, he thinks about his children before he does things. He embraces the love of his family and he doesn't take it for granted. Well, I told a story one time of a man who never opened the door for his wife. She would always want him to open the door, but he would never open the door of the car for his wife. And at her funeral service, he asked the mortuary man to let him opened the door for his wife as they got ready to remove her body from the cemetery. And when the mortician asked him, he said, why? He said, because when she was living, she'd always want me to open the door, but I told her to get on in the car. You don't need, I don't have to open the door. You can open the door. He said, and this will be the last time I'll be able to open the door for my wife. He said, so let me open the door for my wife. A real man, a faithful man. Who can find a faithful man? A faithful man does, does not disregard the love of his family. He goes out the way, even if it causes him to have to make a sacrifice. He does what he can to show his family the same love that they show him. And then we bring it to the R, respect. Respect. A real man is a man that respects his, his family. He respects himself first. 
No, let me say that better. I, 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 I missed the mark on that. He respects God and then he respects his family. A real man respects God. If you can't respect God, <laughs> if you can't respect God, then there's no way you can respect your family. But a real man is a man who respects his family. And he respects his family in such a way that he do nothing to bring shame on his family. He do nothing to publicly embarrass his family. A real man speaks highly of his family, even when things are not going right. A real man has, a, a faithful man has hope for his family, even when his children are, are, are dysfunctional. He, he has hope for his family, even when his marriage is in trouble. He has hope for his family, even when everything around him seems like it's about to fall apart. He has hope for his family. He respects his family. He never, he never talks about his children or his wife in a bad way publicly. He, he, he lifts them up. He respects them and he does everything he can to honor them. Who can find a faithful man? Who can find a faithful man? Who can find a faithful man? It's the question that Solomon asked. But I want you to know today, people, I want you to know today that we got some faithful men in our community. We got some faithful men in our churches. Some may be, one may be sitting next to you today. One may be in your home today. One is in, one may be, one may be on your job. You may know some, your son or your son-in-law that's across the country in another state today. We have some good men, some good fathers who are doing all of these things today. All of these things today. Y'all stop talking about what they're not doing and let's celebrate good father. Stop focusing so much on the ones who are, who are not doing what they're supposed to do. And if you got a real father, a real father, a faithful man, say, let them know how much you appreciate them on this father's day. Salute them, celebrate them on this father's day. On this father's day. Solomon asked that question, who can find a faithful man? We have a lot of faithful men in our neighborhoods, in our communities, on our jobs, in our homes, and in our churches. And as a pastor today, I want to say thank you to all the faithful men that are part of our village, that's a part of our community. We couldn't do it without you. We couldn't do it without you. We love you. We salute you. And we thank you. We thank you. We are better because you're leading us. We are better because you showing up. There's a lot of men that's not showing up. And all we talk about is the ones who ain't showing up. But I want to say thank you today to all of you men that show up that show up in Zoom, that show up at church, that show up at Bible study, that show up at Sunday school, that show up in worship, that show up. I want to say thank you to all of you that show up. I want to celebrate you. I want to celebrate some of you that single fathers. I want to celebrate you, some of you that, that, that uh, uh, women um, uh, that, 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 have, that are taking care of families and, and you're the only resource in the house. I want to take care of you, some, celebrate some of you who are doing more than you could ever ask or imagine. I thank you. I thank you. I think that we have some faithful men. And today, I just want to stop and salute you and remind you what father really means. Thank you all for joining and thank you all for allowing me to bring you this message today. Who can find a faithful man? We got some faithful men and I want to salute them today. Salute them today. Uh, it doesn't matter right now if you're a faithful man, you're a faithful woman, whoever you are. We want to extend our invitation of discipleship with you and ask you right now, ask you right now to join us by faith to join us by faith. Remember I said today that the enemy comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. The enemy is going throughout the earth, if you don't know it, trying to see who he can seek and devour. And he is trying to take you out. He's coming for it. It's not, it's not if he is, when he is, he's coming. He's coming. 
He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. And you all can, can see it happening throughout the earth. But there's a confidence in Jesus. There's a confidence in Jesus. There's a confidence in having Christ and knowing Christ as your Lord and Savior. And I invite you right now. I invite you right now, wherever you are, to come into the fold. If you would just pray this prayer with me. Lord God, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I repent of my sins. And I'm hard to solve my misdoings. Hard to solve my misdoings. And I ask you right now, Lord, I, I believe that you raised God, that you raised Jesus from the dead. And he sit at the right hand of the Father with you. Sit at the right hand of the Father. And I give you my hand. I give you my, I give you my heart. And I give this pastor my hand. And, and I believe if you prayed that prayer with me, that you've been saved today. And I just want to thank you for joining this family, joining this Christian family. And uh, wherever you are, if you want to worship with us, like I said, we're going and back into the building on July, the first Sunday in July, and we'd love for you to worship with us. There, we're going to do it safely. But if you want to continue to join us, wherever you may be across the world, across the state, if you want to continue to join us on Zoom, please do that. Or Facebook, please do that. We're so glad to have you. So glad to have you worship with us. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. We have truly been blessed in this season. These 15 Amen. months, God has taken care of us. And he's did an awesome job. Y'all, he's worthy to be praised. Wherever you are, y'all, to give us praise. Over 15 months, 15 months out the building, and God took care of us. 15 months, y'all. Think about that. That's over a year. That's over a year. I had a, a, the opportunity to get a beautiful picture of Gracie. Uh, I can't think of Gracie's last name right now, but she's Octavia's little baby. Octavia's little baby, Jackie Robinson's granddaughter. Oh, she's gorgeous, you all. She's gorgeous. And uh, she wasn't even born when we left the church. And now she is uh, over a year old. Gracie is over a year old and she is gorgeous. Look how long we've been out of the church. That ought to shout you that God has kept us together as a family in the midst of this pandemic. And um, just want to, just want to give, I don't want to end this service without us giving our glory to God. Thank you so much, St. Paul. You are magnificent. You are magnificent, St. Paul. I couldn't have done this without you. I couldn't have done it without you. You all are. You, you're the best. You're the best church family in the Zion, in the Zion, in this Zion, in the Augusta Sparta District, in the six. You're the best church family. And we couldn't have done this without each and every one of you. But y'all, on the first Sunday of July, it's going to be a celebration. It's going to be a whole lot celebration. If you miss it, you're missing something. If you miss it, you're missing something. We're going to give all glory to God. And I believe it's going to be a beautiful manifestation of the Holy Spirit. God's going to show his powers through wonder, miracles, signs, and wonders. We're going to see miracles, signs, and wonders. But uh, we thank you. It's a miracle that we're all here still. It's a miracle that we are still here. I thank you all. I love you all, and I hope to see you soon. Oh. We need now.